Hello friends, as promised, this week I will be talking about theory of mind. As I have said, it is tangential to religion, but it is vital that you understand what theory of mind is because it will come up later. So, let's go! Theory of mind refers to the ability to attribute mental states to others, including intentions, hopes, and beliefs, and use that to interpret and predict their behavior. Theory theory belongs more to philosophy than to psychology. Philosopher Wilfred Sellers proposed that the concepts and language of mental states are a type of proto-scientific theory invented by our ancestors. Common sense psychology or theory of mind includes observable evidence that connects to mental states, associates some mental states with other mental states, and attaches mental states to observable behavior. Attributing mental states to others means the person draws inferences from another's observed behavior since mental states themselves are unobservable. In the theory theory model, children are viewed as small scientists who make observations and change their minds about how the world works to fit those observations. This includes observable behavior, which can then be attributed to unobservable mental states. Between the ages of three and four, children undergo a cognitive change. A three-year-old typically fails a false belief test, whereas a four-year-old typically passes. What has changed? Theory theorists posit that there is a change in theory of mind of children at this point. A three-year-old sees desire and belief as a simple relationship between a person and the outer world, and these relationships don't allow for the possibility of mistakes. This turns more complex as a child ages, in which he or she comes to realize the beliefs can be true or false. A three-year-old does not yet understand beliefs can be false, but a four-year-old does. However, subsequent findings dispute this theory. Challengers hold that three-year-olds have an executive function problem not a belief concept problem. Other researchers used the modularity nativist approach, which postulates domain-specific modules that are innate and mature at pre-programmed stages. Nativists hold that mentalizing is triggered, not learned, because it is in our genes. Alan Leslie hypothesized a theory of mind mechanism and points out features. Domain specific, it utilizes a representational system to describe attitudes. It is innate and responsible for us acquiring theory of mind and it is damaged in autism. Another theory coming from philosophy is the rationality teleology theory, the leading idea of which is that one mind reads another by attributing to him or her a set of attitudes that render the person a rational agent and thinker. Opponent of this theory, named Dennis Dennett, speculates that we take a specific stance when we try to predict another's behavior, 
called the intentional stance. In this stance, one takes the position that the agent whose behavior is to be predicted is rational. However, this theory is based more on thought experiment than empirical findings. An offshoot theory is the teleological stance. It cannot be said for certain that infants take the intention stance. The intentional stance means assigning to another a causal intention in harmony with rationality. The teleological stance only makes reference to actual and future states of reality. Simulation theory is based on empathy and the question, what would I do? The main idea is that the mind reader projects his or her own cognitive states onto another in order to infer what has happened or will happen next. In recent years, simulation theory has focused on simpler mental states. This incarnation of the theory deals with mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are a subclass of nerve cells that discharge when an animal plans to perform an action or when it observes another animal perform that action. If this also creates mental state attribution, it is also simulation mind reading. Social cognition needs behavioral and mental mimicry. Neonates less than an hour old show this mimicry. In a child, the emergence of pretend play is the beginning of the ability of the child to understand cognition. Thus, pretend play is an early manifestation of theory of mind. In order for children to use TOM, they must recognize that it does not matter what is, but what one believes. For instance, Sally might duck into a shop because she believes it is raining and she doesn't want to get wet. It doesn't matter if it really is raining, only that Sally believes it is. Around the second year of a child's life, he or she will start to communicate intentionally. In philosophy, theorists argue that intelligent communication is marked by the speaker having complex intent. Having theory of mind allows us to acknowledge that another person does not have all of the same information we have. It also allows us to shape other people's behavior by manipulating their beliefs. When given a false belief story, children under the age of five will give an incorrect answer. Theory of mind does not fully develop until a child is around five years old. A typical false belief story is thus. Max has a chocolate bar and he eats part of it and puts it in the cupboard. And then he goes out to play. His mother comes back into the kitchen and sees the chocolate in the cupboard and she puts it in the refrigerator. Where will Maxie look for his chocolate? A typical three-year-old will answer that Maxie will look for his chocolate in the refrigerator, whereas a typical five-year-old will answer that he will look for his chocolate in the cupboard because that is where he last left it. Mentalizing is the ability to gain knowledge about what other people believe and desire. Everyday explanations of behavior in terms of mental states is referred to as folk psychology. One view on mentalizing is that it relies on a person's ability to form meta-representations, that is, representations that are separate from reality. 
This video has just been a brief primer on Theory of Mind. Obviously, there's more to it than this, and you can read about it from Google Scholar. There are a lot of developmental psychologists working on Theory of Mind. You do need to know this for the rest of the series, though. I will be touching on it. As always, my sources are linked in the description. Please comment and like. Uh, I look forward to hearing your comments. Stay curious and never be afraid. Have a great day.